I kept asking this question is, what is it about money that makes us act so irrationally, that makes us act so bizarrely and foolishly? And so I started writing and researching this topic, and I got into the field of sort of brain sciences, right? What's happening in your mind when you think of money? Like when I mention the word money to you, your skin conductancy is increasing. They've done brain scans of people who are high on cocaine, and they've compared it to people who are making money. And they find that the brain scans are virtually identical, right? They've taken, um, taken brain scans of people, men, looking at pictures of naked women, dead bodies, and money. And what got the most activation in the part of the brain was money. I found this fascinating. So I just kept on researching and researching, and my, my career on Wall Street took me all, all around the world to over 25 countries exploring this idea of what is, what is money and how does it have such a powerful influence on our lives. Um, and what were some of, how did you, do, it's such a big topic. <laughs> Of the, were you influenced by any books? Did you what, what was your early reading you had to do to just get yourself in, in gear? Yeah. Some of the books, I mean, again, starting with that question, why were you so irrational when it comes to money? Um, I started with the work of behavioral economists, right? So Danny Kahneman, uh, who won the Nobel Prize, he was a psychologist. He won the Nobel Prize in economics. And he's the guy that sort of comes up with this idea of cognitive biases. For example, my dad, how many of you guys play the lottery? Anyone play lottery here? No? My dad plays the lottery every week. And I said, Dad, why do you play the lottery every week? Like, it's almost a zero chance of winning. He says, well, I see it on the news, and like, there's a person always standing there with a check, and uh, maybe I could win it. And um, he said, oh, one time I, won, I, I matched three or four numbers, and um, I got $400. I said, but Dad, there's a zero chance, almost a zero percent chance you can win. So Danny Kahneman explains this by it's an irrational activity that's going on in the mind. The more likely you can remember things, you start to inflate the probability of them actually happening, right? So, you know, celebrities, do celebrities have more, are, are celebrities more likely to get divorced? You might say yes, but it's because you see it more often in the news that all the drama happening with celebrities. So we make all these irrational financial decisions, and that began, uh, my, my, my odyssey began looking at the book Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow, that was happening in the brain, what hap where did the brain come from? Um, Haif Haim Ofek, who's an evolutionary economist. And, um, you know, this book is really about the multiplicity of money. So many, I, I look at money through diff different perspectives, from evolutionary biology to theology. And so the other books that I look looked at were the New Testament, the Quran, the Vedas, the religious books. What do the religious books say about money? And so that, I, I started with the economists, and I ended up with the spiritual masters. Well, what does Jesus say about money? You know, I was in, um, I was in Calcutta, India, and uh, my job takes me around the world, and I was in Calcutta, India, and uh, I went to Mother Teresa's home for the dying and destitute. This is where people go really to die. It's really, really a sad and almost a moving place. And I walked in, there was maybe 50 lepers um, surrounding me, and uh, this man was sort of quiver quivering on the floor, and Seated among the lepers was a teenager, maybe 16, 17 years old. He looked like a young Mick Jagger, had a mop top. And his um, presence was very um, jarring to me, such vibrance, right? And I went up to him and I said, why are you here? Why are you here serving lepers? Because when I was 16 or 17, I was not volunteering in Calcutta, India. I was not serving those who have so less, so little. And he said to me, Kabir, I'm here because of what the gospel teaches. What does the gospel teach? He said, even though everyone here is poor, they're rich in spirit. Right? They're rich in spirit. And when you go back and look at the gospels, 80% of what Jesus says in the book of Matthew, eight of, eight of the ten parables, are about money and wealth. And it's said there in the New Testament, um, you know, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is pretty clear. He says, lay up treasures in heaven, but not on earth. And then he goes on to say something very curious that theologians have been trying to work out for generations. I'm going to paraphrase Jesus. He says, essentially, you have an eye for the body. The, eye, the, the body has an eye, and if you darken it, you shall not see. And then he goes on to talk about money again. So what is he talking about? Theologians have been, has, they say that Jesus is talking about, about greed. Because greed is something you don't see in yourself. 
you see it in other people. And so in researching this book, I looked at the works of Timothy Keller, who's a great pastor in New York. He said, Kabir, or in his research, he says, I've been hearing confessionals for 25 years, but no one has ever come up to me and said, Father, please forgive me, I'm too greedy. It just doesn't happen, right? And so why is that? It's because greed is something we see in other people, again, not in ourselves. And the Christian, what, what Jesus says is, you know, less is more. So we're all driven by an economic logic. More is better. More resources. I want a bigger car. I want a bigger house. I want a better job. But across all the faiths, and we can go into them if you like, but across all the faiths, there's a more spiritual logic, which is less is more. It's important to detach from money. And how we use money, according to different, the different faiths, can determine the fate of our souls. Got all the gods, whatever religion you subscribe to, every single major religion has like very strict uh, rules about what to do and how to spend money. 